Welcome to the fourth video of chapter 11, which is circumference and arc length. We're going to be learning about two ideas in this video. First one is circumference, which you've done before. Second one is arc length, which is just a branch off of circumference. So we should probably talk about start by talking about, well, what is circumference? Circumference is the distance around a circle. Circumference is really just the perimeter of a circle. So perimeter is the word that we use for all polygons. For some reason, a circle is special and it, it gets its own word. It gets the, the name circumference. There are two formulas for circumference. The first one is that circumference is 2 pi r. This is the formula that I use most often. Now if we look at this, we have this 2r, ignoring the pi. 2r, twice the radius, that's just the diameter. So another way to write this is pi times diameter. They're the same formula, really, just written two different ways. I don't care which one you use, I normally use the first formula. If you want to use the second formula, that's totally up to you. Um, let's look at the first one, example number one. It says, find the exact and approximate circumference of a circle with a radius of 9. So it asks us to find the exact and the approximate, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Now the circumference is 2 pi r, and we are told that we have a radius of 9. Therefore, our circumference is going to be 2 pi times 9. 2 times 9 is 18, so our circumference is going to be 18 pi centimeters. Remember that perimeter just has the same units as, as the radius or side. Now this is the exact circumference. So anytime you leave in pi, that's going to be exact. We are also asked for the approximate circumference. Now there is a pi button on your calculator. It's right under clear, so if you hit second and then right under clear, a pi should come up, and then if you multiply by 18, this is the same as 56.55 centimeters. And then this is the approximate, because I had to round. So that's it, that's the circumference. Uh, when I leave pi in, that's gonna be exact. When I give a decimal, that's going to be approximate. Example 2 says, find the radius of a circle with a circumference of 26. So this time, I'm working backwards. I'm going to look at my formula, circumference equals 2 pi r. I'm told that the circumference is 26. So I have 26 equals, and I'm asked to find the radius. So that means r is just going to stay r. Okay, I'm solving for r. So on the right side of the equation, I have 2 and I have pi. And both of those are issues that need to be moved. I'm going to move them over separately. So the 2 and the pi are being multiplied by r. So I have to divide both of those. First, I'm going to divide the 2 out. 26 divided by 2 is 13. So I have 13 equals pi r. Now I'm going to divide by pi. So I get my radius to be 13 over pi meters. That's exact. Now I can do approximate. 13 divided by pi. Again, pi is right below clear. I have to hit second. And I get it to be 4.14 meters. So my radius is 13 over pi meters, which is the same as 4.14 meters. Okay, let's move on. I think this is our last example with circumference before moving on to arc length. Example number three says, the dimensions of a car tire are shown below. To the nearest foot, how far does the tire travel when it makes 15 revolutions? Okay, so this one is certainly more difficult than the previous two. 
So it says the dimensions are shown. To the nearest foot, how far does the tire travel when it makes 15 revolutions? So I need to think about in my head what's happening. My tire is spinning and it's spinning again and it's spinning again. It's making these 15 revolutions. Each revolution is going to be one circumference or one way around. Right, because my tire is going to start here, it's going to go all the way around, and it's going to come back to its original spot. That's one revolution, which is just a circumference. But it's going to do it 15 times. So really what I need to do is find out what are 15 circumferences going to look like. So, knowing that, I would like you to pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Come back after you have an answer. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now our circumference is going to be 2 pi r, or it's going to be pi times diameter, either one. In this case, our diameter is right here. It's all the way across, so it's going to be the 5.5, add the 15, add the 5.5, which ends up being 26. So our circumference is 26 pi inches. Instead, what you could have done is seen that the diameter is 26, so my radius is 13. Using the other formula, this is 2 pi times my radius, which is 13. 2 times 13 is 26 pi. So using either formula, the circumference is 26 pi inches. That's one revolution. Next thing I know is that this is going to actually be 15 revolutions. So I need to take that 26 pi and multiply by 15 revolutions. This gives me 390 pi inches. So in 15 revolutions, that tire is going to travel 390 pi inches. Now that doesn't mean a whole lot to us. I don't know what 390 pi is. So I'm going to turn that into a decimal. I'm going to take 390 multiplied by pi, and I get 1,225.22 inches. So this is how far that my tire is going to travel in 15 revolutions. But the question specifically says, to the nearest foot. foot. My answer is in inches. So I need to convert this to feet. So I have 1,225.22 inches. Remember that there's 12 inches in a foot, so one foot has 12 inches. So I'm going to end up dividing my answer by 12, which should make sense. There's going to be less feet than there are inches, so I need to get a smaller answer. When I do that, I get 102.10 feet. So in 15 revolutions, my car tire is going to travel 100, about 102.1 feet. It does say to the nearest foot, so about 102 feet. So if you got that one wrong, that's okay. Hopefully we now see what mistake we made, if we made a mistake. If you got it right, that's awesome. Good job. So that is circumference. That's just the first part of the chapter, and that shouldn't be really anything new. From here, we're going to go on to arc length, which is going to use circumference. Okay, so first thing, what is an arc? Well, we've learned about this before. An arc is just a portion of a circle. So the arc length formula isn't so much a formula as it is a proportion. So you're going to take the arc measure out of 360, because 360 is the whole circle. That's going to be equal to the arc length out of the entire circle's length, which is the circumference, so 2 pi r. So every time you set up an arc length equation, you're going to have to do, use the cross products property. 
So this looks complicated, but it's not that bad. So we're just going to jump into doing an example. So if you would flip the page, please. Okay, so example four, it says calculate the length of arc AB. So I'm going to recopy that formula that I wrote on the other page. So it's arc measure over 360 equals arc length over 2 pi r. So the numerator is always the arc, the denominator is always the entire circle. And then I have to start filling in. Now the measure of the arc, I'm going to notice my central angle is 60, so my arc is also going to be 60. So I have 60 over 360 equals... Now arc length, that's what I don't know. It says calculate the length of the arc. So that's going to be where my x is. And then I have 2 pi and my radius is 8. Okay, so this becomes 60 out of 360 equals x over 2 pi times 8 is going to be 16 pi. And now I'm ready to do my cross products. 360 multiplied by x is just 360x. 60 times 16 pi is 960 pi. I'm then going to divide by 360. So x is equal to 960 over 360 pi. And I can do that in my calculator. I do 960 divided by 360, turn it into a fraction. So the arc length which is just x, ends up being 8 thirds pi centimeters. I would like your answer left in terms of pi any time that it's possible. So any time at all where it's possible, leave your answer in terms of pi. And that's it. Right now, I would like you to pause the video and try example 5 on your own, please. Just calculate the length of a 140 degree arc in a circle with a diameter of 12 feet. So pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Come back after you have an answer. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Using the formula above, I'm not going to rewrite it, I know that the measure of the arc is 140, so I have 140 out of 360 equals, again it says calculate the length, so my length is going to be x, and then I have 2 pi, this time I was given a diameter of 12. If the diameter is 12, the radius is going to be 6. Simplifying, I get 140 out of 360 is x over 2 times 6 is 12 pi. Now I'm ready to do my cross products. 360 multiplied by x is 360 x. 140 multiplied by 12 pi is 1680 pi. Dividing by 360, I get x equals 1680 over 360 pi. If I simplify that, I get 14 thirds pi feet. So my arc length is 14 thirds pi. So hopefully you got that one right. Um, if you need to know that as a decimal, it's about 14.66 feet as a decimal. If you didn't get that, that's okay. We're going to do some more practice, so just keep going. Um, but please make sure you do have the correct work and the correct answer at this point since I showed it to you. Um, we just have two more examples to go, and then you are finished with this video. Looking at example number six. Example number six says, calculate the radius of a circle where a 40 degree arc measures 4.19 inches. So let's draw what this is saying, saying I have some circle, I have an arc that's 40 degrees, so this one here is going to be 40 degrees, 
It measures 4.19 inches, and you are asked to find a radius. I would like you to pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Come back when you are finished. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So your setup should have been arc measure, so 40 degrees, over 360 equals the arc length, which is 4.19, divided by 2 pi r. So hopefully you had this set up. Then you should have done cross products. Uh, 360 times 4.19 should have been 1508.4. That's equal to, I like to keep my answer in terms of pi. So 40 multiplied by 2 is going to be 80 pi r. I'm solving for r, so I need to divide by 80 pi. So my radius is 1508.4 divided by 80 pi. Now that doesn't look very nice, so I'm going to turn that into a decimal. In your calculator, you have to make sure that the 80 pi is in parentheses. When you do that, you get the radius to be about 6.00 inches. So hopefully you got that one right. If you didn't, hopefully you now you made a small mistake. The one thing that's really important is to make sure you put that 80 pi in parentheses. If you didn't keep your answer in terms of pi, if you converted it to a decimal right away, that's fine also. Either way, you should have gotten 6 to be your answer. And let's move on to our last example. Example number 7. It says calculate the circumference of circle N. So we are given this arc, this big one, ML. We're given the length and we are given the measure. So let's set up a proportion. The arc measures 270 degrees and it's 61.26 meters. Now, the whole circle is 360 pi and the whole distance around is 2 pi r. Okay, now I need to think. What do I actually need? I'm asked to calculate the circumference. Circumference is 2 pi r. So what you could do is solve for r and then substitute back in. But this is really all I need. I need that entire quantity. So let's see how that will help me. Using cross products, 360 multiplied by 61.26 is going to give me 22,053.6. On the other side, I'm going to keep 270 separate from the 2 pi r. Now, I'm solving for circumference. I'm solving for this 2 pi r, so leave it there. Divide by 270 instead. When I do that, I get 2 pi r to be about, sorry, to be about 81.68 meters. Now that's it. That's my circumference. A lot of you are going to want to do extra work and find the radius, but there's no need to. We are asked to calculate the circumference, which is 2 pi r. We already have that, so just leave your answer like that. So the circumference of circle N is 81.68 meters. I'm going to ask you now to do one more example. I'm going to give you this circle right here. I'm going to tell you that the arc measures 55 degrees and its length is 9.24. I would like you to find the radius. Good luck. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be looking for an answer and work. See you tomorrow.